Welcome to Thunderstorm Avoidance, Strategic Planning Using AviationWeather.gov. My name is Carl Valeri, I'll be your host today. I blog at ExpertAviator.com and am co-host of the Stuck Mike Advcast. Today I'm going to talk about how to avoid thunderstorms using a website that I really like called AviationWeather.gov. The AviationWeather.gov site, as you can see here, is part of the National Weather Service, a service of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. If you pull up AviationWeather.gov, this is where you will uh, see a lot of uh, home news, uh, top news, etc. But let's dive right into it. The first thing that I do, and actually uh, what I use as my home page, is right here where it says Radar and I click on radar and what that will do is that will take you to the aviation digital data service which is part of aviation weather center and this will give you uh, the radar site and a overview of the whole United States let's pretend we're uh, planning a trip from Tampa to Fort Lauderdale here in Florida what I will do is I'll click on Tampa Bay region to start my planning and that will pull up the composite reflectivity of the Tampa Bay area. If you notice we're about to get a few thunderstorms here in the northern Tampa and also southeast Tampa Bay area and our route going down to Fort Lauderdale looks like we are going to run into a few thunderstorms. If you look at the bottom of the page you can also see that there's some sectors that they have combined to allow you to get a, a better view and an overall strategy for avoiding these thunderstorms. So let's click on the southeast region where we will be able to see the whole composite of uh, Florida and uh, also uh, Georgia and uh, South Carolina. And as you can see, this is where we are going, Fort Lauderdale, and here is Tampa Bay. This is a great tool, great overview of, of uh, the thunderstorms that you're going to see en route. This is the first thing I will go to because now if my aircraft has radar but doesn't ha have any uh, downlink as far as, uh, say, XM uh, weather, I'll be able to look at this picture and remember it in my head and say, okay, I know that there's storms building over near southwest or excuse me, southeast of Fort Myers area. And I probably will have a hole going through over the Okecho Lake Okeechobee to get down to Fort Lauderdale. In uh, certain airplanes, and a lot of the newer airplanes, they do have the XM weather, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, but most of us don't have that right now, especially in the, actually the Jedi Fly, we don't have that, that option. Now, going back to the aviationweather.gov site, the digital data service portion. We have a few tabs here. Of course, radar is the first one that I always go to. For planning purposes, I also will look at the turbulence uh, tab just to see what type of turbulence I'll see en route. There's uh, the current turbulence sigmets. There are none as can be shown here. If I click on that, it'll actually enlarge it and you'll see that there's no turbulence sigmets valid right now. But we can go back to the turbulence tab and take a look at the graphical uh, turbulence guidance and click on that we will see up here it'll show you the maximum turbulence predicted and the time so say we're leaving in another two hours we can see there's 1900 to 20, 2100 click on 2100 we can get a better idea that of what type of turbulence we're going to run into now this is the moderate or greater down getting close to Fort Lauderdale as you can see it says moderate or greater based on the graphic well Let's look at the altitudes we're going to fly at. Well, 11,000 is the lowest for this graphic, so we're going to look at 11,000 since we're only going at about 9. And sure enough, it's still showing uh, some turbulence, but not much in the Florida area. Just seeing uh, some in the Midwest, etc., and also in, in uh, Louisiana, which is actually a front that's moving towards this area. So yeah, we're going to be good. No, no, uh, no turbulence there. But the other thing we want to look at is. Uh, some of the pi reps of turbulence because that's even a better indicator. So I'm looking at turbul the turbulence tab, then I come over to the pi reps tab to see if there's any type of turbulence that's been recorded. A great graphical representation 
is here on the southeast region where I can pull up the southeast region and it'll show me, oh, there's no turbulence that's been reported. Uh, but you can see in South Carolina there's uh, uh, some uh, one report and it's at 4,500 feet, it's negative. There's, no, uh, there's also one here at uh, 10,000 feet and that's a uh, light to moderate turbulence right there. You can see here uh, the graphic and that'll tell you it's light to moderate. The next thing that concerns me is icing. Uh, no matter where you fly, uh, the, you have the potential of running into icing, especially you know in the northeast. But let's look at Florida. If we took a look at the icing tab, you'll see current uh, icing sigmets. As you can tell, there's no uh, sigmets currently out for icing. But let's look at the uh, supplementary icing information, and you'll see at the bottom we do have a threat of supercooled large droplets, and that's what this hash mark, the red hash mark, means. On our way down to Fort Lauderdale, it's, uh, it's a graphic that's a little bit tough to see, but you can see from Tampa Bay down to Fort Lauderdale, we may run into that. Of course, we're going to probably run into that up into the freezing levels. We're going to be uh, flying rather low today, so we don't have to worry about that. But look up here into the northeast. We're going to have some really uh, a chance of some uh, heavy and uh, moderate icing in the northeast, uh, if, especially if you get into some of those thunderstorms. Again, this, uh, this is just an overview, and for your planning purposes, like we said before, if we go through Lake Okeechobee in the center of the state, we'll probably be able to get around that. Let's look at the convection tab. That's next. Uh, this is another uh, great tab for looking at the convective sigmets, and sure enough, as you can see, we have convective sigmets. Clicking on convective sigmets, we see that we have uh, a few in the Florida panhandle, and some north of Tampa, but look along our route here. 45,000 feet and above, we're looking at tops for those thunderstorms here and, uh, and heavy rain showers. And these are the current uh, sigmets. Now, if you notice, there is some orange, and it's showing up in the northeast here. Some of this orange, that's actually going to be uh, outlooks for uh, convective sigmets. But these red are actually the current convective sigmets. So, yes, we're going to run into some possibly heavy thunderstorms. The nice thing is that they're, they don't look like they're bunched together that much. So what I'm going to do is, again, I go back to the radar, I take a look, and I see where are those storms. And yes, sure enough, in the southern Florida, we can see it. There's some thunderstorms there in the Naples area. Using in the top left, I can use the graphic to actually move to an adjacent radar. So I go upwards, and I can see here's Tampa Bay and I'm looking at planning on my flight down to Fort Lauderdale, ah, there's that storm again. Now here's another interesting thing that you can do with this. It is terrific. You can actually move that radar. If I click on it again, what's going to happen is it's going to start the radar in motion. And you can see where those storms are moving. Not much movement to those storms. So that we can see that they're building and then also uh, they're in some cases dissipating. And we can use that regional radar here to look at a larger region and the movement of the of the thunderstorms. Again, here we go. This is they're moving just slightly to the northwest. But if you look over here in the Alabama and Louisiana here, we're looking at some real strong thunderstorms, even up towards Atlanta, uh, some bad storms. But no, we're just going down here to Fort Lauderdale. Now, if I'm on this chart, on this map, and I click on here's Fort Lauderdale. I click on it. It will zoom into that radar, and it'll show us the current radar for that area. If you notice, some of these uh, flashing here is temporarily unavailable. There are times uh, when that will happen, where you will get that, and it kind of gets a little bit annoying at times. So what you do is just just stop that uh, from from uh, actually looping like that, and go back to the regular radar site, and that's where again. Going back to my home page, which is the base reflectivity uh, or in the uh, ADDS radar site, and it's uh, so you can actually zoom in again, and it'll be stopped right there, and it'll give you the current radar what's going on right now. Another important thing when you're looking at these anything that you have on the internet is the time. If you see, it says 20:36, which is 4:36 p.m. Eastern time. That's really important because sometimes these images are loaded and they don't load current ones so you, you think you're looking at a current image and really you're not. You see these huge thunderstorms and it's clear outside and you're saying, wait, what's going on here? And that's normally what it is. That'll happen every so often. 